What's happening guys and girls, Akronator here, and welcome to another episode of World of Warcraft Dungeon Overview. This episode will be going through the Trial of the Champion, which I'll be guiding you through it with my warrior you see here. So with that being said, let's dive straight into it. As we've finished conquering threat after threat that's been thrown at us thus far, there's finally nothing left standing in our way to the Frozen Throne. The Siege of Ice Crown Citadel is almost upon us, and now it's time to regroup and consider who will take part in this legendary battle. There is no room for weakness, as those who would easily fall in battle would only serve to bolster the Scourge's ranks in the end. To that thought, High Lord of the Argent Crusade Tyrion Fordring has devised a tournament to be held in the northern tip of Ice Crown. The finest champions of the Alliance and Horde have come together to test their mettle in a safe environment away from the ever-looming threat of death, in order to prove their worth. We've relentlessly practiced our combat skills to hone them into a well-sharpened blade to be used against the undead. Now the time has come to prove our prowess and earn our spot in the battle against the Lich King. The Trial of the Champion is a level 80 dungeon with a heroic mode located in the northeastern tip of Ice Crown. Relatively far from every other major landmark in that zone, the Argent Tournament is deceptively peaceful compared to the menagerie of horrors found due south. Regardless, you don't have to worry about fighting your way to this dungeon entrance, just head over to the Alliance side of the grounds like you see me doing here, and make your way up to the small ramp to the entrance. Just as we are placed into the arena to represent our faction, so too have heroes and champions from the opposing faction come to prove their worthiness. While this is a friendly test of skill and no blood is supposed to be shed, that won't stop tensions from flaring between age-old rivals in a fight such as this. To start the first encounter, you'll need to walk up to the NPC standing in the center of the arena and talk to them. Once that's done, you'll need to run over to the wall, grab a lance, and then hop on your respective faction's mount. Unfortunately, you need to joust the opposing faction's members for the first phase, though you'll see me jump off my mount so I can get footage. You'll see three groups of four mobs enter one after another, each group consisting of three trash mobs and a boss NPC. You'll need to fight the three trash mobs of each opposing race in the order that they first entered before fighting the boss mobs. Once the trash mobs are cleared out, all three bosses will charge at you at once. Unlike me getting footage, you'll need to be on your Argent mounts and trying to beat these guys the old-fashioned way. Once you beat them, the champions will retreat and regroup to fight you in hand-to-hand -hand combat. There are a total of five random champions that you could be facing, from which three will be selected. There are certain DOE abilities that you should look out for, such as cleaves and fire pools, but those are relatively easy to avoid if you just keep your distance. The main thing to look out for here is that there is a possibility that one of the champions will be a shaman with healing capabilities. If present, take care of that boss mob first. Before we will be allowed to join the Argent Crusade in their, well, crusade against Arthas, we must be able to stand up against some of their best and brightest the light has to offer. Get it? Brightest? Because they're champions of the light? Ah, forget it. Either way, Eadric won't be pulling any punches, so be ready. Once you've defeated the Grand Champions, just talk to the NPC in the center of the arena yet again to start the next encounter. It is important to note that the second boss has a random chance to be either Eadric or Paletris, the next boss I'll be going over, so just keep that in mind. Regardless of which boss you're facing as your second encounter, they'll come into the arena with a small band of Argent Trash Mobs to take out before the real fight can start. The biggest thing to look out for is a spell that Eadric will cast called Radiance, where he'll stun all players looking at him for a few seconds after the cast. Just quickly turn around around towards the end of the cast to avoid this. The other ability that you can do something about is where the boss will throw a hammer at a random player's location. If not stunned, this hammer can actually be caught and thrown back to the boss to avoid extra damage. If there were any member of the Crusade that were more vindictive than the Adric, it would probably be Confessor Paletris. Her piousness is almost sickening, but regardless, we're both fighting the same battle here, so we might as well prove our worth to her while we're at it. If you get Paletris as your second encounter, clear out the trash mobs like I already said, and then there's only a few simple mechanics to look out for. There are a few different spells the boss will cast that you want to interrupt if you can. The main one is Renew that will heal her if allowed to finish. If you still have someone with an interrupt, you might also want to stop Paletris from casting Holy Fire to avoid a bit of extra damage. When the boss reaches half health, she'll summon a few trash mobs that you'll need to kill before continuing the fight like normal. Pretty simple, really. One fun little tidbit is that these trash mobs will take on the form of an enemy you faced recently. This could be anything including previous bosses from other dungeons, though the abilities they use won't change regardless.
how and why Tyrion allowed for an agent of the Scourge to sneak into this tournament, I'll never know. But he's taken out some of our most promising warriors we've found thus far. While questing around the tournament grounds, we've managed to uncover this cultist's true identity. And now's our chance to prove to Arthas that he should be scared. Again, once you're done with the previous fight, and ready to finish up this dungeon, just talk to the NPC in the center. To start off the Black Knight encounter, he'll use pretty standard Death Knight abilities, just be wary of the plagues he can cast if you're the healer, and dispel them if you can. He'll also raise the Argent Herald he killed during his entrance as a standard ghoul minion. Just focus that down first, nothing really special here. Once you defeat the boss, he'll rise up again as a skeleton, and summon an army of the undead to fight at his side. You know, because his rotting skin was merely a setback. Rinse and repeat. And his only a scratch, because the Black Knight is back one more time in an attempt to finish you off. Didn't you hear? Ethereal is the new black. No, but seriously, each time he comes back he has less abilities than before, so this fight just gets easier the longer it drags out. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, maybe even subscribe. Links to my social media and whatnot are in the description below. And as for the common question, how do you think Tyrion overlooked the fact that the Black Knight was really one of Arthas' death knights? I mean, he obviously didn't know, because he let the guy kill some of the previous champions. Plus, there's the fact that we had to go uncover the truth ourselves while questing, so I doubt the High Lord actually knew about this deceit. But then that of course begged the question how one of the strongest paladins the world has ever known didn't sense a messenger of the Scourge was in their midst. You'd think he'd pick up on that sooner. I don't know, maybe he was just too busy prepping for the tournament? What do you think? Anyways, that's all the time I've got for today, so until next time, don't die.